Walmart and Home Depot both reporting a beat on the bottom line and the top line. Home Depot shares down six tenths of one percent, but Walmart shares nice gain there for a four percent gain plus. Joining me now, Payne Capital Management President and Payne Points of Wealth podcast host Ryan Payne. Your reaction to these earnings this morning, Ryan? Uh, I think it's very good, and I think it just speaks to how the market's already repriced everything. I mean, think about Walmart, which kind of blew my mind. I didn't realize now with the stock up this morning, it's only down like 3% for the year. Um, so we're almost in positive territory. So, you know, preemptively, they came out three weeks ago, said that their earnings were going to be problematic. So I think, you know, what you're seeing here with the market is in this whole earnings season in general is just that, you know, the beats have been pretty significant. And there's just been this dire forecast going into the summer about where the economy is and where earnings were going to be. And let's face it, the economists and strategists have been dead wrong. And I will mention, I've still been very bullish the whole way through. You have, but Mark Tepper can that last. Jump in. Yeah, so, uh, all right, Ryan, I got to ask you, man, because I, I, I'm <laughs> trying to figure out, you know, I, I think I'm a little more bearish than you. I'm trying to figure out, is this just a bear market rally or is this the beginnings of a new bull market? And, and on Friday, we, we hit a key metric that I've been watching very closely which is 90% of the S&P 500 began trading above its 50-day average, which is typically one of those signs you see when we do enter a new bull market. But at the same point in time, I'm concerned about all this negative macroeconomic data. So w what do you have to say about that? Yeah, no, no, I think it's a good point because look, I mean, we are slowing down. Make no mistake, right? That's what the Fed wanted to do. Economy is slowing down. But we, of course, we saw the job market's just like red hot. And I talked to, I know you talked to a lot of business owners and I do too. Everyone's problem is we can't find labor. So I think that issue is going to go on for a long time. We know that commodity prices are coming down, inflation starting to come down. And, you know, if that starts to come in line and wages can start to exceed that, I think that's very good. But the other thing I will mention here, and I mentioned this about four weeks ago, money managers have been sitting with the largest amount of cash since they did right when we were at the bottom of the financial crisis. And Mark, you remember that, right? Yep. We saw the scars on our back from when that happened, right when the market turned. And I think what you're gonna see right now is a lot of money, money managers have been sitting in cash. They've gotta get back in this market. They've missed performance. And I could argue that's gonna create a bull stampede because there's FOMO now. Well, we're, we are not even close to the Federal Reserve really beginning to reduce its balance sheet. And that the kind of monthly runoff begins to increase shortly. And that is a Federal Reserve setting money on fire and destroying, um, de destroying money. How can that not hurt stocks? How can that not hurt all asset classes? Well, I think the 10-year Treasury is telling you everything you need to know, right? I mean, we're at 2.8% right now. The high was like 3.5%. So I think what basically the market's telling you is even if the Fed does start to unwind their balance sheet, and I agree with you, that's, that's kind of like been in on the back burner. You're not hearing much about it right now. And that could push yields higher. But I, I think the bottom line is we know when you come into September here, the consensus is the Fed's probably going to be less hawkish than we anticipated. So I think a lot of that is already priced in. And I think the fact that, again, if you look at long-term inflation, it's being priced in at 2 3%. Even if you come in a little bit higher than that, you know, we're still way, ways away from that 8.5% print that we saw last month. So I, I just think the situation is just less dire than what the anticipation was. And that's all that matters, right? It's expectations versus reality. Well, and reality is a lot better. It, well, it's expectations, Liz, that j Powell's going to be a weakling. <laughs> And, yeah, be, and you know, and, 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 and kowtow to Biden. It, that's what. It, it's not just the, the actual policy. It's just that Jay Powell's going to is weak. And I don't. I don't, I wouldn't take that bet. I take the other side of it. I, I, I'm not taking that bet either. In fact, ISI Evercourse out this morning with a note on the Fed talking about how he has to remain very hawkish in order to maintain credibility because. The slump we've seen in inflation or the cooling of inflation really has much more to do about the softening of China's economy and what's going on in Europe than it has to do with raising rates here in the United States. So I think the Fed has to kind of make its mark uh, in the next month or two. I think the market could be very disappointed if they don't back off. What do you think, Ryan? Well, that's a really good point about China. And my question is, what about when these cities come out of lockdown? You know, that's going to create a huge amount of demand. Now, to your point, that could bring commodity prices back up and could bring inflation right. back up. I think that is a good point, but it's also going to bring economic growth back up. So pick your poison here. Um, so I think there's more positive from lockdowns going away in China than actually them being in lockdown. And, you know, we're seeing that now with supply chains. That'll ease that, which will actually be 
you know, disinflationary. So I think overall it's a net positive, not a net negative. I think it pays here to be very, very bullish because the world's been very negative and they've been wrong. And now these money managers have a lot of pressure to get back in these markets. I think it's a very important the point. The S&P is still down like 9% year to date. Let's not talk about like, hey, <laughs> everything's back. I mean, Walmart isn't even, you know, Walmart's up today. Maybe it gets back to, to flatline. Right before we go, U.S. home builder confidence hitting the worst slump since 2008 housing collapse. Home builders saying the U.S. is in, quote, a housing recession. The National Association of Home Builders Index fell to the lowest level since May of 2020. Housing starts and building permits are out at 8.30 a.m. Eastern time. What do you expect in there? Yeah, it's absolutely going to cool. Let's face it. I mean, mortgage rates now over 5 percent versus 3 percent at the beginning of the year. Um, you know, construction costs have gone up astronomically. However, I think, you know, prices will come down. But demographically speaking, we have a huge bid behind the housing market because there's so many millennials that want housing. They need housing. We've had an undersupply for a decade. So I think housing prices can only go down so much. Ryan Payne, thank you for being here. Great to see you. My pleasure.